Hey everyone! So you have an upcoming deadline for the Pecha Kucha project that you guys have this semester. So far you've already planned your topic, you know what you're going to present on. The next assignment you have is just the rough draft. This is a way to kind of put your thoughts together and have an outline of what you're going to present on in a couple weeks. Now a lot of you may be wondering, now what? I have a topic, but what am I supposed to do with that? So the very first place I'm going to lead you is to our Blackboard site. So here I am in Blackboard. I'm going to go to the Pecha Kucha. And then here you have the Pecha Kucha guidelines. Read through this. I have lots and lots of information on the different assignments, including the rough draft. You've already submitted your topic. And here is the rough draft. So this is due in about a month, so you have plenty of time. You'll see one the rough draft template. This does need to be done in PowerPoint. The template isn't really much of anything. I'll actually open what I have. Uh, I've already started filling this in with my own information, but all it is is 10 slides. Yes, everyone must have 10 slides. And if I go to transitions, I've already made it so that all of the slides advance after 20 seconds, which is standard in the Pecha Kucha. But that's all the template is. Then you fill it and change everything that you want to, just you need to keep the slide number 10 the same and how long each slide is the same. So now what? What do you do? You have your topic. The really the next thing for you to do is learn more about your topic. And that's what Google's for. So I'm gonna kind of walk you through how I'm gonna do it for my topic, which are brown pelicans. So I'm just starting, you know, brown pelicans. And you'll find all sorts of websites. Now, part of your rough draft is choosing good websites. Here's an example of what is not a good website. Wikipedia. Wikipedia has lots and lots of information, but the people who write Wikipedia are people just like you and me. Uh, this is why it is not a reliable resource. Do not use Wikipedia. If you do, you get points off. But, 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 Wikipedia can, in some instances, be a good resource. For example, uh, here it says that uh, this is the dimensions of pelicans, their wingspan, their bill length, and you see this little two? That's actually a reference, a reference to a more legitimate website. In this case, uh, it's a paper, Handbook of the Bur Birds of the World, uh, I can find it. There's a Wikipedia information on it, but I could actually Google Handbook of the Birds of the World. This book is written by legitimate people, people who have authority in the subject. So you can use this as a reference in the sense of you can learn some information from there, but take a look at the original resource that information came from. Here you see references down here. Most of these are actually good information. Here we have information from U.S. Fish and Wildlife, from the Smithsonian. Those resources we can trust. It is their job to understand this species. So let me go back to my Google search. I'm really not going to use Wikipedia at all just because there's so many other websites that have good information. For instance, I'm going to go to Audubon. Audubon is a huge society. They are experts in all birds and a very scientific society. So I know I can trust them. So if I go to their website, I can read a kind of a general overview, learn about their diet, nesting, eggs, feeding, uh, young. Now the information here is probably not enough for my entire slideshow, but it offers some really good information. I can look, here's one, uh, Brown Pelican Fact Sheet by FWS, or the Fish and Wildlife Service. Again, this is an organization that I can trust. Now, you may not be familiar with these organizations. These might be government agencies you're not familiar with. A good rule of thumb is that if you see a website that ends in .org or .gov, you can usually trust those. Those are usually from rep reputable uh, suppliers of information. But even if you're not sure, that's part of the rough draft. You'll be giving me links that I will review and let you know if you can use them. So I'm not going to show you the in-between. I know a lot about brown pelicans, but let's say I didn't know anything. 
I'm going to spend some time. And when I say some time, I mean, you're thinking about hours or days just learning about your topic. Once you really understand your topic a lot, it's a lot easier to build your PowerPoint. So here's that template again. I'm going to kind of show you what I've put together. And this is what I expect for your rough draft. It doesn't have to be full by any means. So what I've done on each of these 10 slides is I've gone ahead and put in a title just so I know the general information that will go on each slide. So I'll talk about other pelican species. I'll talk about what they look like, uh, what they look like. It'll probably take me a little bit to talk about because they do have different colorings depending on the time of year. So I'll probably have one slide for summer, one for winter. I have their diet, where I can find them, you know, their migration patterns. Reproduction will kind of take a while, so I have two slides for that, and then conservation. If you're doing a species or a disease, it doesn't matter what exactly you focus on. You don't, for a species, you don't have to cover every single thing. Maybe you just care about the conservation of that species and want to spend your time talking about it. For a disease, maybe you're really interested in how it gets transferred people to people. That's okay. You don't have to talk about every single aspect. This project is completely yours. Your only constraints are just time. Uh, that's your biggest constraint. But what you want to talk about within that time is completely up to you. So what I expect for your rough draft is you should have all 10 slides. You should also have a general idea what will go on each of the 10 slides. Here I have a title for everything. Uh, that's probably the bare minimum. If you want to put more, I recommend it, mainly so that I can give you more feedback. For example, on conservation, I might want to say uh, we're on the endangered uh, species list, uh, recovered in the year 1985, and maybe my last thing is uh, over 1 million birds now. So this isn't what my final slide will look like. I'll have pictures, it'll look a lot better, but this also gives me a general idea of what I will specifically talk about on this slide. Now last but not least, and what is really important to get your points for the rough draft, is I want to know where are you getting this information from. I want to evaluate the resources you're using. So what you'll need to do is put the links of whatever websites you're using on each slide in the notes section. Here, the notes section isn't shown, but there's a notes button, so I'm just going to click that, and down here it says click to add notes. You can also change how large this is by just dragging. So for this, I'm going to say um, information on conservation from, and then I'm going to go to a website. Um, this I'm really just making this up. You would spend more time to actually pair these correctly. Uh, but I'm going to say on the Audubon website, they gave a lot of information on conservation. And when I talk about conservation, pretty much everything I talk about is from this website. So I'm copying that link. I'm going to put it here in the PowerPoint slide. And then when I start grading your rough drafts, I'm going to go to every single website that you give me and make sure that the information you say you're grabbing is from that website and to make sure this website is a good website to use. Don't worry if you're like, oh, I'm going to use this website. I don't know if it's good or not. You won't get points off for it. If you do use a bad website, you won't get points off in the rough draft. The final draft you will, but I'll let you know in my feedback if it's good or not. So with that, that's pretty much all you need to do. So all of your slides should look something like this. You have a title. Uh, hopefully you put some additional information. It'll help you and it helps me. And then the notes section on every single slide, you need a website. Now one website might be used for multiple slides and that's okay. One slide might also have multiple websites. That's okay too. It's just important to cite all your resources. Also, you may notice this is slide 10. Slide 10 will not be a references slide. Slide 10 needs to have lots of information on it just like your other slides. What we'll do in class is I'll actually give you a presentation, a full presentation of what uh, this looks like. And you can kind of use that as you're planning too. So good luck and just let me know if you have any questions.